Hello there, come all from you. No Zelda game has been as influential as 1998's Ocarina of Time on the N64. So much so that for nearly two decades, no Zelda games was able to surpass it for me and many others. Now, 23 years after it first leaked in 1999, the complete Triforce is finally in the game and an obtainable reality thanks to Saran and his helpers. And it just shows the commitment to this title, which lives on with new content decades after its first release. The passion for this game is truly unrivaled and a testament that Ocarina is as important of a legacy title for Nintendo as Final Fantasy VII is to Square Enix. Which begs the question, could or more importantly should Ocarina of Time be remade in HD or 4K sometime in the future when we have the 3DS remake with all its extras that can be upscaled? The answer is yes, so be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already and press the notification bell and let's get into why an Ocarina of Time HD remake on the Switch or in 4K on a future Nintendo system is far more important than any other project apart from new open air Zelda games. Then why not go for the easy option, upscale Ocarina of Time 3DS from 240p to 1080p, just like we have seen in these shots from Noclip. It would absolutely make sense in 2023 for the 25th anniversary of Ocarina of Time. And I'm not saying that it will not happen, but with a new Zelda game in spring 2023, I don't any longer see a 25th anniversary surprise in the second half of 2023. Besides, I think Nintendo knows that this game deserves more. A proper remake that could be Nintendo's equivalent to the Final Fantasy VII Re Trilogy. With the difference of not being a game cut up into three parts, but one full game for $60. Not only that, one that might add key features that were cut during Ocarina of Time's lengthy development filled with constant changes. One of the most notable being the Unicorn Fairy Fountain and the obtainable complete Triforce as the story and structure of the game changed from a Mario 64 painting in a castle level system to the first attempt at the open world on a console, at least when it came to Hyrule Field. No way perfect outside of the massive for the time Hyrule field, but a game with pacing and story length that is unrivaled to this day in this series. And this is most evident in its dungeon and mini dungeon department, as Ocarina, unlike most other Zelda games, starts out with three very organic child dungeons, before transitioning to complex adult temples, all reflecting the story of growth and passage of time that is so key to this title. A game that isn't afraid of throwing scenes of death right into your face, or just outside of problematic religious elements kept the mature and dark elements found in both the child and adult sections of the game. A game that isn't afraid to stop for a minute to reflect before sending the hero into another set of trials and obstacles. Yes, the Water Temple was notorious in 1998, but luckily improved in the 2011 low-res and handheld 3DS remake. And this is the key takeaway from this. The game can age even more gracefully, but it needs a remake made for an HD or even 4K system, not an upscale N64 Plus experience. What do we mean by that? That a remake doesn't necessarily have to expand the by today's standards tiny map, but rather make it more seamless. So not as much Ura Zelda, but more precisely turning this map, which is smaller than the size of Breath of the Wild's smallest province, into an open world without any loading screens outside of the dungeons and mini dungeons. Meaning that Ocarina, much like Breath of the Wild, could easily become seamlessly interconnected, just as we have seen in the Unreal Engine 4 recreations of the game. We could have one map with buildings that we can enter without any waiting times or transitioning the screen to white whether we enter buildings in Kakariko or move between provinces. But most of all, include the entire castle town with the few streets and back alleys that are a part of the town but were not accessible on the N64 or 3DS. A perfect compensation for taking away what would have been the most awesome castle town yet in Breath of the Wild. With more fully explorable rather than corridor areas, Ocarina could also be turned into a more immersive experience. A true blend of all the new. Thanks to Breath of the Wild, we know that the Switch and future Nintendo systems will be able to easily handle it, as Breath of the Wild's map is over 10 times the size of Ocarina's. Add to that the ambition of video game remakes in the last years, and how they have reached for new heights, especially from Japanese game developers. Good examples here are Capcom's Resident Evil 2 and 4 remakes, and Square Enix's first Final Fantasy VII remake game. Reinventing old classics, and in the case of Final Fantasy VII, turning them into a true requel, to satisfy both an old and new audience. This is the golden age of remakes, but so far Nintendo has failed to deliver true up-to-date HD remakes of classics in the 2020s, and an Ocarina of Time HD or 4K could change that significantly. Plus, it can easily be sold for $60, even if it doesn't include Ocarina of Time 3D's remake of GameCube's Master Quest. Seriously, Ocarina of Time 3D was so packed with a second quest and boss rush mode, that simply a graphical remake without any cut content will be far more than most other remakes. 
mostly since Ocarina of Time has the best pacing of all 3D Zelda games to date. Though there's one big downside to Ocarina even on the 3DS, the lack of dual analog camera controls, something that even Majora's Mask 3D had, and on the Switch it will be a must, since this alone could drastically bring the 25 hour game up to date. But what if, as we have suggested, the game could be something more than just a modernization of one of Nintendo's greatest games of all time? So explore the most crucial event in the Zelda series even deeper, the timeline split. You know, the one that was caused by the final two battles and the aftermath of this game. Where one outcome is that Link is successful but sent back to the past after Ganondorf is sealed away and the other is Link's death leading to the downfall timeline. Or what if there could be a third outcome that makes the most sense of all? Ganondorf Ganon killed instead of being injured, you know, where he cannot break out of his imprisonment, but instead reincarnates at a later point in the time. Not only that, with Ganondorf's passing, the split Triforce can be brought back to Roru in the Chamber of Sages in a complete form and setting Link on a post game. One to claim the complete Triforce and use it to mend Hyrule in this timeline, much like in A Link to the Past. The Zelda equivalent to Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition Future Connected, which was also on the Nintendo Switch. The game remains the same, only improved mechanically up to the final blow, but then instead of cutting to Ganondorf's ceiling and Link being sent to change the past, Link instead goes for the complete Triforce after wielding the Triforce of Courage during the final battles. The crucial change which brings back the complete Triforce could be integrated at the very end of the remake under a very simple scenario. Link learns right before the final battle of the Princess Zelda's kidnap by Ganondorf of how wrong things go in all timelines where Ganondorf Ganon is kept alive and sealed. In other words, leading us into a Triforce quest which most likely will differ from Sauron's Triforce Percent, an official fourth branch which can get its own games in the future, but where the hero and princess, much like in Skyward Sword, end up with the complete Triforce. Or if you prefer the good ending for the Hero of Time, where he does not perish under horrible circumstances. An outcome where Link does not go back, but instead stays in the future with the complete Triforce, just like in Skyward Sword. Ganondorf reincarnates at a later point, but long after the Hero of Time dies after a happy life in the restored kingdom. And this is the thing, as remakes today are expected to not only improve but also add to the original experience. Change to preserve, but instead of creating awkward moments throughout the game like, say in Final Fantasy VII Remake, let it all come to fruition after a fateful and graphically mind-blowing experience. Not necessarily an Unreal Engine 4 like Cryzenex or Run Link has presented up to this point, but something comparable visually. The key takeaway of a remake though is to respect the source material up to the final battle against Ganon. So every part of the game where gameplay is involved, and first in the cutscene that follows, add the first plot change, by confirming that Ganondorf Ganon is dead, and the split Triforce has reunited in the Sacred Realm. Needless to say, the split Triforce is what prevents Triforce percent from becoming canon, but with the holiest relic reunited, the game can get another quest after its end. A new final dungeon, the missing Temple of Light, and a questline which tests Link's balance of power, wisdom, and courage. Unlike Final Fantasy VII Remake, a Zelda Green of Time Remake, like the one we have envisioned for a future anniversary in this video, is not a new game, but a respectful recreation of the original with modern mechanics and graphics, including dual analog camera controls, and is more or less identical with the original Ocarina. The only changes can be some extra Majora-based upgrades, mechanics and gameplay, as Triforce Percent also featured for the first time during Summer Games Done Quick 2022, all to bring in the best mechanics like the actual bunnyhood found in Majora's Mask into the game and also before the final battle. A game that respects the original story until its final cutscene, but in return grants a post-game which changes the Zelda franchise once again, making this remake similarly impactful as the original in 1998. Adding another celebration just like in the original, and then another for claiming the complete Triforce for the kingdom. The best followed by a true Triforce ending, setting up for who knows perhaps even another Hero of Time adventure in the future. Oh, the possibilities that a simple change in the ending of a remake leading into a Triforce postgame could create, a Nintendo equivalent to Triforce Percent, which could no pun intended be the golden outcome of Ocarina of Time, the one that the Hero of Time deserves. Until that happens and Nintendo doesn't just Metopia or Green of Time 3D to the Switch, I can highly recommend the following. Go and watch the complete Triforce percent run by Sauron and the awesome speedrunners on Games Done Quick's YouTube channel and Sauron's own channel, as it is a true piece of history. One that Nintendo could take inspiration from to create Ocarina of Time Triforce Edition, the final and ultimate version of the Zelda game that will never die. But what do you think of Triforce Percent 
And do you think that we'll ever see a physical release or remake of Ocarina of Time again that isn't just an upscaled Ocarina of Time 3D? Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell to not miss any of our upcoming Zelda, Nintendo and Switch videos. Last but not least, a big thanks to you for watching until the end and our patreon.com slash Comerol patrons with our producer Charles Shash. Your all fans rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.